بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله um, Today's halaqa the name that we're going to discuss about it will be the name of Allah Al-Halim the most serene the most kind and gentle all forbearing and the calm abiding the one who is kind and gracious and serene in all situations the one who is calm and deliberate um, and never hasty even with rebellious and the wrongdoers the one whose, ma whose manner is lenient and mild the one who gives us the opportunity and situations to learn um, to be kind gracious and patient this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the names that actually nowadays people need to practice inshallah to be uh, even closely uh, associate themselves with such a uh, attribution because we needed it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and on top of that he covers up for you on top of that he is not actually hasting any punishment we might deserve هذا هو الله سبحانه وتعالى الحليم um, you go to also uh, we heard also before that people say كاد الحليم أن يكون نبيا حليم the حليم actually uh, he nearly becomes a prophet because these are the qualities the prophet is used always used to have if we go back to the ayat of uh, of the Quran we see for example an ayah in Surah Fatir where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says ولو يأخذ الله الناس بما كسبوا ما ترك على ظهرها من دابة ولكن يؤخرهم إلى أجل مسمى فإذا جاء أجلهم فإن الله كان بعباده بصيرا If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds people accountable to the actions that they did on this dunya ما ترك على ظهرها من دابة He would never have left anybody in this earth ولكن يؤخرهم إلى أجل مسمى But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He withholds that for them up to a certain time فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلَهُمْ If the time comes in فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِعِبَادِهِ بَصِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows and sees what his servants are doing In Surah Al-Nahal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَوْ يُؤَخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسُ بِظُلْمِهِمْ مَا تَرَكَ عَلَيْهَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلِ مُسَمَّةٍ فَإِذَا ج Al-Halim in Arabic means the one who actually postpones or like holds the uh, punishment from the servant so they will have the opportunity to correct themselves. Um, but if actually you hold the punishment in order for, um, you know, uh, in order for uh, the one who's withholding the punishment in order for them to punish it even harder, that is not halim, that is becoming something called in Arabic hiqti, which is in the nas. Another ayah in Surah Taha we heard and we see and we read, the ayah says, وَلَوْلَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ لَكَانَ لِزَامًا وَأَجَلٌ مُسَمَّى And if not for a word that preceded from your Lord, punishment would have been an obligation due immediately and if not for a specified term. Or degree but uh, this kalima or this word we also learn in the hadith where uh, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said from the Rasul uh, from Allah Allah said and wa rahmati inna rahmati taghlibu ghadabi or sabaqat rahmati ghadabi my mercy preceded my anchorness and these are the things we should be thankful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we needed all the breaks that we can get because we are in, in we always do the wrong things. We always actually don't, you know, act upon our anger. And sometimes we even forget to actually make istighfar or ask for tawbah. Tayyip, the Rasulullah practiced this helm so many times. And throughout the seerah, you will see, you know, situations where the Rasul Sallallahu was Rahim and at the same time was Halim. At one point, there is this between 
who actually came, you know, behind the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Rasul, he had like a, 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 a you know, a top, and they call it Najani. So he holds and he pulls the, you know, the, 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 the thobe. And actually that was actually even, it, it hurt Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he left, and it left marks and uh, on his neck. And that man, he was asking some of the Ghanaim and uh, uh, from the Rasul Sallallahu the Rasul Ismaili. And, you know, he gave what that man, that man wanted. And when the Prophet, when the, uh, when, when about the Sahaba, some of the Sahaba, when they do actually, uh, uh, you know, some uh, mistakes, the Rasul Sallallahu without actually being harsh, and being harsh to them, he used to correct their mistakes in a manner that everybody loves it. Remember that uh, Sahabi, that when uh, he, he came in and he was a little bit late, but he uh, tried to rush and, and, and get to the, you know, uh, the Salah with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he caused the Jalaba, what they call it, which is like a lot of noise. But when the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba, they finished the Salah, and he, uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to know who was that, when they told him, he said, Zadakallahu hirsan wala ta'ud, wala ta'ud. You know, like may Allah increase, you know, your desire of actually doing the, the, the good deeds, but don't repeat it what you did. That is the quality of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so many uh, uh, situations. And also uh, the Sahaba did the same thing. And we also uh, see uh, these name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use it in conjunction with other names, like for example, Ghafoorun Halim, Ghaniyun Halim, you will see that throughout the Quran, these names of Allah has been used. So for us, as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to know and practice these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and nobody is perfect, but remember, uh, if you are not Halim, you can become Halim. Uh, they said, uh, there's two types of Halim, one is tatabu, the other one is tabu. هناك حلم حلم التطبع وحلم طبع. حلم التطبع is تطبع is like when you actually practice and to become halim. حلم طبع is like when you already actually alhamdulillah Allah give you the quality and the character of being halim. And this is kind of like a provision, like a risk from Allah subhanahu wa taala. قيل and they said هناك حلم متطبع وحلم طبع the same thing like uh, and uh, you know when you're learning something uh, you have to actually uh, 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 practice this learning because nobody born knowing everything you're also going to see this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Halim use it in one of the famous du'a of du'a al-karb they say this du'a al-karb it comes and it goes like uh, like this it says, La ilaha illallah al Hadim al Hadim, La ilaha illallah Rabbul Arsh al Hadim, La ilaha illallah Rabbul Samawati, Rabbul Ardi, Rabbul Arsh al Kareem. This is actually uh, throughout, you know, the hadith and, and the ayat, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, teach us so many adhkar to say in so many different situations. So Alhamdulillah that Allah is our Lord and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa'allimuna wa qa'iduna and throughout this Islam you're going to learn this kind of stuff and we are the ones who actually benefit benefit from these kind of teachings. Al-Halimu man kana saffahan an al-dunubi sattara lil-uyub Al-Halim is the one who actually forgives the dhunub or the sins saffah bisad Sataran lil'ayyub The one who actually when comes across the ab of one of his brothers and his sisters he did They actually turn to cover up for him Hadha huwa al And we also said that uh, you know when you're becoming halim you should be able to really uh, uh, You know you, you use your power in order for you for example to punish or anything like that If you are not in a position where you can actually punish nobody you cannot become halim you can just, uh, 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 you know, maybe you can like it or like, uh, 
uh, hope in, in your heart. But the Halim, the actual Halim is the one that is capable actually to um, punish you and yet he chose not to do so. Al-Mu'min al-Sadiq, the true Mu'min, is the one when they see Asi, or like someone who's committing Asiyan, Yara'afu wa yahnu wa la yitakabba. He actually feels, uh, you know, uh, sorry for you. He will actually be kind to you, and he never puts himself in high status. The idea of us knowing to these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very important, brothers and sisters. Um, this is these are the names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself so we need to study this in order for us to know Allah more we need to know the the these asma'ullah al-husna because Allah said walillahi al-asma'ul husna fad'uhu biha wa sumiyat al-husna and then the reason why actually uh, uh, it's been said these are good names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these attributes you see and in, 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 throughout the uh, ayat and the, throughout the Quran, the ahadith, it is complete. It is not 99% right, it is more than 100% right. And also remember, when you are actually studying these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to keep in mind the ayah for Surah Fi Surah Shura, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's all hearing, all seeing. And the reason also why this, there's more than one name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is ala dalalatu ala azamati al musamma wal mawsuf. It is actually a proof that the names and the attributes are also great because it is belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The importance of knowing this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually to increase or to hold firm your iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, once you know more about these attributes, actually you feel comfortable worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You become actually um, in, in calm. You will enjoy your ibadah even more. And you will become confident with your ibadah and your actions when it comes to the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It gives you tuma'nina. It gives you like, a, 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 you know, a comfortability when you're actually doing your ibadah the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted you to do. So we need also to practice these names and qualities that we are learning Starting from home, you know, with your wives and children, your brothers and sisters, uh, your neighbor, your actual community at workplace, in school, in the market. So we actually every day we need to try to become even better and uh, 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 understanding of these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we, uh, you know, and then, you know, uh, when, you, when you understand these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make dua as well, you know, invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using these names. Allahumma ya Rabb, ighfir lana dhunubana, ya Rahman, irhamni, ya Rahim, irhamni. These are the way that you can actually practice uh, using these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many different situations. If you see it, study it and uh, look through uh, the Quran from the hadith if you can actually read uh, so many maqal or you know articles about these names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just remember uh, these good names of allah belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to practice as much as we can we also make a dua using these names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I hope inshallah we'll you know shed light a little bit for more of these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us those who benefit from these names of Allah and practice it inshallah.